So just a minute to go. So maybe start, sir. It's uh, six. Yeah, it's, it's exactly six. Uh, Dr. Wander, sir. Dr. Rajiv, sir. Should we start or? I think, I think it's the right time to start. And, uh, kar do, kar do. Thik hai, sir. Right, right. right sir. All are waiting. Yeah, right. So. I would just request everybody to mute uh, Ashwin if you could do that so that we have minimum sure. disturbance. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. So I have to unmute you first. Done. A very fine evening to all present here. A fine evening to the August uh, gathering of uh, senior physicians and surgeons across the city and outside. Uh, it's indeed a great matter. We all know that uh, COVID pandemic is around. And uh, in this pandemic, the masks that we put on are very much a part of our being. So with these masks that we wear, I'm just reminded of a very, uh, uh, very well-known quote. Shemika Bowers had one written, do you love me or the mask that I wear? So the masks which we have are now a health worker's love. They're a choice of health worker. They're very important because they give a safety gear to the health worker against this very deadly disease. However, there are several stories about these masks which need to be unfolded with less evidence-based literature which has been gathered in the last few months. And we are very lucky today that we have an A speaker with us, but even luckier to have some very great moderators with us. We have with us Professor Gurpreet Singh Wanda, Professor and Head Department of Cardiology, the Anand Medical College and Hospital. Besides being an astute cardiologist, Sir has a great interest in all walks of COVID pre uh, prevention, and he has taken great steps. He's been instrumental in taking care of safety gears at the Anand Medical College and Hospital Ludhiana. So welcome, Sir. Thank we you. also <laughs> have with us Dr. Rajiv Gupta. We all know him. He is a renowned psychiatrist who has been holding the strings of psychiatry in this study, Director Manas Hospital. Extremely grateful to him for having joining despite some uh, emergency for which we can see he's in a car with his mask. So welcome, sir. And uh, I was laughing with Ashwin that the only time that we get to see each other nowadays is when we are without a mask. Uh, but all, all over to uh, Dr. Wanda, sir. And uh, to please uh, go ahead and welcome the speaker of the day and introduce the topic. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Shiva, for uh, this uh, introduction. Uh, I must say, uh, the new normal that we are all living in uh, these days, masks have become now an integral part of uh, uh, our life. Dr. Ashwin Baba has uh, taken very keen interest, actually, in these safety guards that we are now adapting to. Uh, initially, there was fear in our mind how we would use these the face shields, the masks, and uh, the, uh, the uh, PPE kits. He has been reading extensively into this. He has posted on Twitter multiple times. He's even interacted regarding his thoughts with uh, a very august group, which includes experts from Stanford on how masks should be produced and how masks uh, should be worn. So it is very appropriate that we have him in our town and uh, we are fortunate that he has agreed to uh, give us some of his thoughts. And then maybe we can have an interactive session after this uh, as to what thoughts other have. So over. So should I start? Uh, please unmute, sir. I think you. Sir is. Yeah, uh, Dr. Ashwin, you can start. Somebody yes, muted me. It's okay. You can start. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So can you share? Can you see my screen now? 
Yeah, nicely. Yeah, sure. So, just so uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, Wandersar, uh, for introducing my uh, introducing me. But uh, you have been the inspiration, and uh, numerous chats with you that that have been the key source of inspiration. You've been always telling me to find a solution to common problems, and I think so. Uh, this uh, investment of time uh, and everything in uh, the safety gear is one of your own teachings to you know find solutions to common problems. Uh, so I'll be starting my presentation. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll be talking about masks, uh, their handling and reuse today. I'm an associate professor of surgery at Dayanand Medical College and Hospital. So uh, some disclosures. I am a general surgeon. I am not a microbiologist, neither an infectious disease specialist. And I'm trying my best to dodge uh, COVID-19, just like Spider-Man, uh, just uh, getting away from these lasers in these times. This is our current situation, and I think so we should all realize that. So this was me this uh, January, and this is me this July on the right. So see on the left, it's my loosely fitted mask. Who would ever care and who would ever see my droplets would not fall into the patient with this loosely fitted mask. So just as time passed by and coming this July and this COVID pandemic, our, our approach to safety has completely changed. Uh, we have in our availability the best of uh, gears, the PAPR, and uh, my assistant wearing a, an N95 with a face shield during surgery. So times have grossly changed. So this was uh, my WhatsApp uh, conversation this, uh, uh, on the 9th of February in our DMC family group. Uh, I wrote uh, N95 masks, acute shortage everywhere. Situation is getting pretty grim. This was almost at the beginning of the pandemic, probably before that. Something in me wanted to find out whether I would ever get an N95 or never, never would I need an N95. Well, the truth is this. Uh, I have a confession to make. I had never worn an N95 mask before March 2020. In fact, if I think of when I knew about, uh, when I even think of N95, I could only think of 2017 smog in Ludhana when probably I thought there would be an N95 and I found out that 3M makes... Uh, N95. This is my Facebook post from then. So highlights of the presentation are masks, various types, taking care of the masks and reuse. So uh, this is just a basic chart from OSHA, which is uh, Occupational Safety Hazard Association of the US, uh, which talks about three ways to fighting any infectious uh, disease. One is uh, engineering controls, uh, uh, with which you can either eliminate and uh, destroy the virus for good, which looks like a distant possibility right now. Second is administrative and work care practices, which involve wearing a mask, social distancing and everything. This is uh, uh, still we are trying to follow. But the last and the least effective of all is that all workers who are facing the infection have to wear personal protective equipment. Uh, so this is least effective. And I think so. Uh, we need to be very careful and uh, follow all impertinent precautions doing that. We know that COVID spreads via heavy droplets, and we know that it has fomite uh, transmission from surfaces as well. Uh, the latest and uh, more uh, talk is on aerosol transmission. So because of aerosol transmission and the risk of the healthcare worker getting infected, and we know about India's current numbers, uh, various authorities, the CDC, WHO, talks about only use of N95 while uh, doing an aerosol generating procedure. If you see in this sli slide, the N95 is only picked for the aerosol generating procedure. But I think so for patient contact in this era when we are in hospitals which are typically low roof and we have lots of overcrowding and even if even because our people are not sticking to mask discipline and wearing loosely fitted masks and not even wearing their cloth masks properly, their masks are usually below the nose. I think so it is more important to cover, cover ourselves, cover all our uh, nose, mouth and, and eyes properly so that we do not get any sort of uh, touch with aerosols at all. So wearing an N95 during these times when you have increasing numbers, even in our own town, is uh, very, very important. I have, uh, this is uh, my self-created edited photograph. Uh, I probably tried the maximum amount of PP that you can think of. Uh, 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 probably uh, learned little things that the goggles that you are supposed to wear are supposed to seal your face 
from all around if you're not wearing a goggle or a face shield and uh, just thinking that you're wearing spectacles which is enough it is uh, frankly not enough you have to seal your face from all around uh, an N95 has to become our daily driver and has to be a part of our routine if possible try getting a disposable gown or a washable gown that uh, covers you while you're examining patients or taking ward rounds uh, gloves or if you're not uh, using gloves uh, frequent hand washing, washing has to be a part of uh, uh, your daily uh, routine. Uh, uh, an apron is the least that you can do over your scrubs uh, to protect yourself. Uh, so coming to the main topic of the day, the surgical mask can be classified into four types. One is the normal uh, three-ply masks that we wear. The second is the respirator. Anything that seals your face and makes you breathe in through that is called a respirator, whether an N95 or higher. Then these are uh, on the extreme left uh, below is, uh, are the elastomeric respirators, uh, which are, uh, uh, if you're not, uh, you know, uh, these uh, normal N95s are not fitting you well, you need to have these ones uh, to protect yourself. And the last and the industrial grade, something which is there is a paper. I, I have a few words about it in the end. Uh, so coming to surgical masks, as surgeons, we've been wearing this uh, all, all, our, uh, uh, all the time and it is... Uh, Please always remember that the normal lifespan of a surgical mask is not more than three hours, uh, not more than six hours, and you have to dispose it off properly after use. It has uh, classically, if you open it up, it has three layers. And please again, do not reuse your surgical masks and properly handle and uh, throw them away in the yellow or the red bin according to your hospital infection control practices. So classically, in this uh, graphic, you can see the three layers of uh, a three-ply mask, the virus particles can leak out of the mask through the gaps at the side. Uh, always, if you uh, just need to be very sure of the quality of the three-ply mask you're getting, make sure that you have the three plies uh, with at least a, a nose piece, which makes, makes, the, makes the mask sit properly at the nose at least. Uh, coming to the most important, the hottest topic is N95s. Uh, uh, these are single use uh, usually. Dispose, uh, disposable for reducing exposure to airborne particles. Uh, mechanism of multiple, uh, uh, it works on the principle of a microfiber layer in between, which has electrostatic current and through which particles are filtered. Uh, the most important thing that I stress again and again is the mask fit. Uh, if there are gaps, it, it, it will allow unfiltered air to go in from the side. A facial hair is a definite hindrance and we need to take care of that if you're wearing or donning an N95 mask. So the N in an N95 stands for non-oil resistant and N95 signifies that it filters about 95% of 0.3 micron particles that pass through it. Uh, N100, uh, P100 is one which filters about 99.7% uh, particles that pass through it. Uh, more importantly, uh, uh, this, uh, you need to know that the size of the virus particles is usually smaller than 0.3 microns. It, so, so, uh, so how does it work? So these particles come in together and because of that electrostatic and the polymeric layer in between the N95 mask, these particles are filtered out. Okay, so uh, what has happened uh, recently is uh, we used to associate uh, uh, the N95, which is a US uh, sort of classification for uh, these respirators. Uh, 3M uh, in its uh, May to 2020 militant, and probably they're talking about it before also because of shortage of these NIOSH approved N95, which is a US classification. The other respirators that you can look at, look at is FFP2, which is a European classification, KN95, which is a Chinese classification and equivalent to an N95. The others, which I've not seen myself, are P2s and uh, the Korean ones and uh, the Australian. Uh, once one must be very sure that uh, there is a particular number uh, written on that respirator if it is if n95 is not written that would be ffp1 ffp2 or an ffp3 if if your respirator just just see the outside and see if an ffp1 respirator is written on the respirators outside don't use it because it will filter about 80 percent of particles uh, passing through it and it is not the ideal one to be worn during these pandemic types times it is typically a dust and a dust and a pollution mask uh, 
we ideally need uh, an FFP2 if it is not an N95 or higher, uh, which filters about 94%, which is equal to the N95, which we currently use. Be careful of uh, reading what is written on the respirator and it's very, very important. I'll tell uh, more points about it. Uh, coronavirus can survive for, uh, for a few hours on the surface, uh, probably for about three days. That's why it is important uh, uh, that we need uh, uh, to take care of this mask and its surfaces, the inner and the outer surfaces can be really dirty. So uh, be careful while handling the N95's uh, uh, outer and inner surface. So typically an N95 will have multiple layers. Uh, uh, the inner layers uh, are the vent blown filters and it is usually in the shape of a cup. Uh, there are two mechanisms uh, which are very important for any, any N95. One is F, which stands for fit. It should fit you very well. And the second is filtration. So the best of the masks have these two properties of fit and filtration. And uh, with this uh, electrostatically uh, charged layer in between, which is a polymeric layer, most of the particles passing through this N95 will get filtered and get stuck uh, because of electrostatic uh, charges. So uh, please be careful of the fit and filtration of your N95 masks. So uh, how do you ensure a proper seal of this mask? Usually we do not perform fit testing in India. Uh, a fit testing is usually done to see how well an N95 uh, mask fits you. You're given, given a hood and some uh, coffee beans in which uh, you know, you're made to smell those co coffee beans. And uh, then an N95 is fitted uh, uh, properly uh, with proper uh, donning uh, way and then you're again given those coffee beans and if you're not able to smell those uh, that would be a perfect fit test. Uh, so secondly uh, how do you ensure a proper seal is while uh, donning and doffing procedure little things that you need to do and thirdly is uh, uh, you can perform a seal check I can demonstrate that later how do you perform a seal check while donning. So ideally, you need to hold uh, the N95 respirator from the outer side after sanitizing your hands, then bring it to your face. Uh, any sort of glasses are a hindrance for wearing an N95 and have to be ideally off. Uh, so once you take the N95, hold it uh, from outside, bring it close to your face. It has two straps. First, uh, wear the upper strap and then the uh, lower strap. Make sure that you, uh, uh, you know, uh, push the upper surface and uh, fit the nose piece pretty well, then ideally you should have a mirror along uh, in front of you so that you can see that how well your N95 is fitting you. It's very, very important. So how, uh, so if there is an inad inadequate seals, maybe because of poor fit to user's face, uh, for example, the Chinese KN95s are not made for the Indian face. So, you know, uh, some faces are, uh, thicker, some are thinner. So you need to be very sure about what sort of an N95 uh, you're wearing and make sure that it fits your face well. Second is if your straps are broken and your nose piece is, uh, is not uh, in proper shape, you can have uh, your N95 will not fit you well and, it, and will not seal your face. Thirdly is again, I talk about face, uh, face facial hair, which is a big problem. So ideally, uh, so this is how an N95 uh, looks like uh, the layers, uh, you know, 95% of, 100% uh, of the larger droplets that come on a 995 are blocked directly on from its surface. 95% uh, are, you know, are, 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 are filtered because of the uh, electrostatic currents inside. So, and plus larger uh, pollens and everything else is also filtered across an N95. So these are some of the images I found out. So this guy on the left, uh, is wearing an N95. The problems here are that he's got facial hair, which is making his N95 lift up. His straps are, are not aligned properly. Thirdly, it's, it's, it's that it is, it is getting curved inside. How would uh, most of the air pass through? And this would leave a gap for air to pass, pass through. So you need to be very sure and look into the mirror while wearing an N95. Secondly, I found another example of how not to wear an N95. See, these straps are going crisscross. Uh, he's wearing a three-ply. That's pretty good. He's wearing a head cap, which is pretty good. My, my subjects are all wearing head caps. But these things are going crisscross. And this would, you know, the uh, uh, area in between the, uh, these straps will allow the viruses, you know, he will be breathing in through this and probably get infected if he's not taking proper care of his N95 respirator. Thirdly is a common, common finding that uh, 
that I, I see, I see some, I see people wearing a three ply under an N95 mask. Uh, this will make the, the N95 uh, mask float up. Of, for the guys who are wearing these, I ask them, why do you do that? They say that, you know, I need to protect, protect my N95 mask because I'm reusing it. I think so it's, it's, it's a false uh, sense of satisfaction probably because he will not be protecting himself if he does so. That respirator can be bought again but his safety would be marred. So please make sure and tell your colleagues and tell your staff to wear your N95 respirator directly on your face and cover it with a three-ply mask. This is a strict no. So, uh, so talking about the best masks that, that you should choose for yourself, uh, in the Indian scenario, you know, I tried to find out what are the best NIOSH certified. NIOSH is the American standard for an N95. All these masks, which, which are the American standard, would have N95 and NIOSH written on them. Please try, try to identify the word NIOSH on all of them. I could, I'm um, sorry for, uh, so this is the 1860 by 3M. This is a very sturdy medical surgical respirator mask. You have the 82101, you have another one from Venus, which is a NIOSH certified mask. Then we have a Magnum mask, which is in NIOSH certified. Then there are certain by Kimberly Clark and others which are duck billed and again NIOSH certified. So always look for NIOSH certified masks and use them if you have them available. Uh, if NIOSH is not available, then, uh, then there are other uh, certifications like KN95, but make sure that, it, that KN95 is fitting you well. Uh, if you have to take my suggestion about an ideal mask, please always uh, choose, uh, choose a mask which has head loops uh, rather than ear loops. Ear loops masks are usually loosely fitting and would never get in your certification. I checked the website today also. So ear loop mask will never get an approval from a US uh, agency. But uh, these head uh, headband ones will get approval because they usually fit pretty well. So this is a must and I tell everyone that combine your uh, N95 mask with a surgical three-ply mask. This will uh, protect it from get, getting its outer surface dirty and you can reuse it uh, according to the CDC guidelines and according to the guidelines by AIMS. Always combine this with a face shield. A face, uh, using a face shield solves two purposes. It again protects uh, the N95 mask and most importantly it protects your eyes. And according to the latest CDC guidelines also, I think so it's a must to protect your eyes uh, if you are in a in, in, a, in an area with moderate uh, to uh, sustained transmission of COVID-19. Uh, this is something interesting which I found out. So uh, there are lots of Indian manufacturers who are making masks. Be sure uh, the Indian equivalent to an FFP2, according to the guidelines also, uh, is, uh, is, is IS9473 uh, semicolon 2002. This is an ISI mark. I found a 3M mask which has the same things written on it, IS9473-2002. This is an FFP1, but this is not the right mask that you should wear. The similar thing would be written for an FFP2. You need to find out uh, FFP2s with IS9473-2002 written on them. So uh, what, what masks not to reuse again? If your masks get dirty, if you've just had coffee, uh, or, you know, uh, some sort of oral secretions or even lipstick, you should not use uh, those dirty masks. If the masks have broken straps, please do not reuse them. If the nose, uh, uh, nose pins, uh, nose pieces are not properly aligned, don't reuse them. Be careful of any uh, deformation or tearing on the surface of the mask. Uh, please uh, handle your N95s very, very carefully. I always tell everyone to handle the mask with a strap and uh, do not handle the front or the back of the mask in case you need to adjust it uh, use a sanitizer before using and use uh, before any sort of adjustment to your n95 mask uh, again and again i tried uh, making videos on these ones well masks are an absolute contraindication if your hospital supplies have only a well mask please cover them with a three ply mask this is a to this is totally a wrong mask to be used this is an ffp1 so FFP1s are, uh, are, are not supposed to be used in COVID because they filter on, uh, only 80% and this one has a valve too. So please be careful and wary of the valve. And if you have valve masks, try to cover them uh, with a three-ply mask. 
because they will allow unfiltered air if you are an asymptomatic carrier or a patient visiting you is an asymptomatic carrier you know you you will contaminate the patient will contaminate surroundings will cause or aerosolization i call these uh, masks with valves as mini aerosol generators and i think so the patient would infect you please ban uh, help uh, help inform your authorities and get them banned in your hospitals uh, which these mess, uh, masks are a total mess right now so what problems is to uh, why do we talk of reuse of an n95 one is uh, limited supply of these n95s they are actually in short demand we have supplies coming in for, uh, from 3m for a while and you know they get they get finished uh, quite quickly we have a problem of plenty in india and the numbers and our population is too high and secondly they're expensive uh, Uh, so uh, we need to consider the reuse the world uh, is talking about reuse cdc says that we need to uh, we need to reuse them so uh, one important thing that uh, first important thing is that uh, please do not try to use any sort of alcohol sanitizer or soaps uh, uh, any any mask which is washable should not be considered adequate if you wash your masks it spoils the electrostatic energy uh, that that filters Uh, most of the particles so never ever wash your mask microwave heat uh, if you might trying to microwave or thinking of high dry heat or even autoclaving them uh, uh, you know it would spoil most of uh, the mask uv light steam and low dry heat and vaporized hydrogen peroxide are the only only viable option uh, so one must always remember that the surface viability of these viruses uh, is about 72 hours so you need a process to you know not use them for 4 to 5 days and re- then re- then th- then thinking of reusing just don't casually keep the mask on your table and you say that i'll come to my work and use it again the next day you have to wait for 5 days at least before you should try using them so these are certain simple steps that i got together for uh, uh, explaining the reuse of masks uh, it's a busy slide but uh, this is from a paper uh, recently published on uh, reusing of filtering uh, uh face piece respirators so you need to perform hand hygiene before donning an n95 respirator inspect the n95 respirator for any uh, evidence of physical damage a new respirator can also have some sort of damage and then it should not be used don uh, n95 respirator and perform a fit test use a surgical mask or i i would say i would rather stress use the face shield and a surgical mask to, together over an n95 mask uh, perform hand hygiene before removing the the n95 respirator handle the mask only with straps use uh, bags like these uh, to store your n95s uh, label them i would rather suggest that you use uh, four masks uh, on four consecutive days and then use the uh, the first mask that you used on the fifth day so your mask gets adequate rest it should be kept at a temperature ideal temperature of 22 degree c in a cool corner of your house with the mouth open and uh, properly labeled uh, that's important uh, you can set aside at least 3 up to 7 days i prefer about 5 days before donning a used n95 respirator inspect again for damage uh, you wear gloves while donning a used n95 respirator because it can still have some sort of bacteriological contamination uh the maximum recommended days for an n95 reuse is uh, about 5 uh i thought of certain problems i'm a surgeon and uh, uh, i have certain uh, reservations about wait and reuse but uh, we are helpless right now one is the hot and humid weather right now you know we can have excessive sweating and the inner surface might get more contaminated than we than we think uh there are oral secretions uh, which might contaminate uh surfaces we know mouth is one of our their dirtiest cavities uh, i think so they might act as an uh, ideal culture media and if you're not handling these reused masks properly you know you can still uh, contaminate yourself with not viruses but still bacterial infections or others or even skin rashes for that matter so any any reuse strategy you need to be careful about four things it should preserve the n95 filtration mechanism it should preserve the fit it should not destroy the fit of the mask it should kill viruses and other pathogens and not it introduce other additional hazards for example some people thought of etoing these masks they say that it releases a gas that might be carcinogenic so we might we need to be very careful so we uh, 
thought of something uh, innovative and I, uh, we designed a uh, UV DMC, which was, uh, we converted a double surface phototherapy unit into a, into a UV sterilization box, uh, box. And I think so UV is one of those uh, very inert methods, uh, office type methods, and you need to be, you need to handle these uh, UV lights very carefully. If you're not handling them well, you know, you can uh, cause permanent damage to your eyes and, uh, and even uh, skin problems. Uh, so UV is a good math method, a simple method to decontaminate, but it needs the, uh, you need to really have more tube lights uh, and plan that model accordingly so that you get the exact dose. And you know, for, if you see in this picture, a mask is kept like this, you need to decontaminate both these surfaces of the mask. Uh, if you think that UV is a good okay. method. So, uh, uh, so talking of protective gear, I have stressed that earlier that face shields are mandatory. Uh, so you have a seven, uh, 76 to 97 reduction in contamination of mass, about uh, 68 to 96% reduction in aerosol exposure. Uh, this was being used at the time of SARS as well. Uh, more importantly, if you're wearing a face shield, you'll not be touching your face and mask again and again. And it's a cheap way to uh, protect everything and can be locally manufactured. So if you have to clean your face shields, use about 70% alcohol. Uh, chlorine can be used, but it stains uh, and uh, UV is a good method. Uh, I told about this earlier. So CDC says that please protect your eyes. If you have moderate to sustain sars cov 2 transmission, we don't need more evidence than, than CDC talking about covering of eyes. I, uh, please make sure your glasses are not enough. So these are uh, certain uh, certain advanced things for surgeons. This is a half mask on the right and a full mask on the uh, on the left. Uh, these have P100 filters. Uh, uh, see if you if if the N95 is not fitting you well, you need to go to these alternatives to find what seals your face very well. And uh, you know you are not breathing from the side of the mask. Uh, these might look fancy. But for some, for surgeons who are there for long hours or in COVID isolations, you might need them. But you need to take special care. There's a special process to decontaminate uh, these sort of masks. So uh, these are the various filters that, that come for this. The plastic bodied are better because it is easier to clean them. Uh, these pink ones are like masks and you need to have four or five, five of them that you rotate on a daily basis if you're going operating daily or going into isolation daily. Uh, this is uh, a powered air purifying respirator. This uh, is a helmet that seals your face. Uh, it comes like in a waist model or, or the head helmet model in which, you know, uh, there is the motor on the back where uh, HEPA filtered air uh, comes in, uh, passes through the helmet and uh, is, uh, is expired out with a little sieve at the back. So you get in HEPA filtered, 99% HEPA filtered air. Uh, I find this uh, very useful while operating because I would not need a face need a face shield once, once you're doing laparoscopy. You know, if you're wearing a face shield, it fogs a lot. So, so a few fuss uh, looked at viable options, and uh, this was uh, something that was available uh, in India, and we could acquire this. So, uh, you have to perform a fit check for these elastomeric pink colored respirators. P hundreds can be used till breathing becomes difficult. It can be used up till three months. It's uh, in external and internal surfaces need to be clean, uh, need to be cleaned properly with alcohol. Uh, you have to immerse it in a warm detergent solution uh, to clean dry it. Respirators are to be stored. The mass, uh, the pink filters are to be stored in a sealed plastic bag. So I'm ending this presentation by this uh, saying: uh, safety isn't expensive; it is priceless. Make all efforts uh, to protect yourself. Uh, be very careful. We we are passing through a tough phase. And lots of healthcare workers are getting infected. Uh, this is our chance to uh, to protect our families, and I think so. Its safety isn't expensive; it is absolutely priceless. I am always happy to help. Uh, available at at a call or a WhatsApp, you can always uh, message me. I would be in one of your WhatsApp groups. Uh, uh, that's it for now. Thank you, Ashwin, for a very beautiful presentation, a very practical one, I must say. Uh, you not only introduced us to various types of N95s that are available, but you've also shown us uh, uh, the reuse policies. I'm sure there will be some issues, comments, and questions. 
so the talk is now open uh, maybe dr rajiv gupta wants to make a comment and shiba wants to say something and then we'll open it for the house uh, anybody wants to make comments most welcome because i've been there in the recommendations so along with the reasons so uh Aswin, I think you need to make everyone mute. We are having some uh, background. Yeah, I think Dr. Rajiv, Dr. Rajiv sir is saying something, but he is muted. You need to uh, unmute. Okay. Uh, 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 thank you very much, Ashwin, for your uh, crisp and the brief talk. <clears throat> but the see, if you have hundred health workers in any institution, is it possible for the employees and the institution itself to provide N95 masks on the regular basis? Because Cost becomes very, very prohibitive. I understand it is very important. The consultants may afford it, the practitioner may afford it, but other health workers are equally exposed to the corona. Will it be possible to afford them? The second is, in the market, if I try for the N95 mask, the original mask, it is almost impossible to get them. And what you get in the market, you don't know whether they are genuine or not. What I know is in Ludhiana City, but I hear is a lot of manufacturers putting all kinds of the stamps. And what in your hand is you don't know whether genuine or the other fake masks. Sir, uh, sir uh, first question. I think so. It is important for the uh, for the hospital and the doctor managing the hospital to ensure that all his employees at least are wearing, uh, if not possible, all most of them who are involved with patients get an N95 uh, mask if you are in close association and not testing your patients uh, uh, for uh, RT-PCR. I think so you need to have uh, those N95 masks and uh, I think so the cost, uh, I've, I've been very actively involved with 3M and Venus uh, for uh, ensuring supplies for our surgeons at least. So, uh, so the prices have drastically come down. For a respirator which was available for 400 rupees, I myself purchased respirators for 400 rupees, are actually available for 80 rupees or 150 rupees, and they're genuinely priced and coming from the company. That's that the same is true for Venus as well, uh, and they're happy to help doctors across and associations across the country. Uh, so uh, perhaps if we take more interest and become more, more proactive then supplies uh, would be directly from the company and that would also take care of black marketing. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I've seen a lot of duplicates. In fact, Dr. Shiba and I recently suffered, uh, suffered a problem where we had bought 82103M from the same guy. And in fact, uh, uh, by just a casual discussion one day, she said, Ashwin, I feel that the straps on this 8210 uh, are pretty different. So, uh, so I couldn't sleep the whole night. I, 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 I messaged her in the morning to get it to the hospital I wanted to see. And you would not believe it. It turned out to be fake. Just right under my nose, right under my nose, she, I called Shiba, my sister. We had a respirator which was actually a fraud. So, uh, so I think so. We need to be very sure as doctors because there are two problems. One problem is that uh, we infect ourselves. The problem is we seriously infect one of our senior family members. The third is the risk of being quarantined. The fourth is, is the stigma of and the media coverage for if you're quarantined and you infect someone. So I think so as doctors, uh, we need to raise awareness. We need to be very sure about what we are getting. I'm happy to help. Probably I, I've, I've been worried about these duplicates and, and got fascinated with them. So I now know what are duplicates, but this happened recently right under our nose we, where we could just get a duplicate respirator. Yashwin, yeah, uh, just I add to it. Yes, sir. Only five days back, one of the one of the major national pharmaceutical firm mm -hmm. distributed masks in millions in the entire country. When I got those masks, I wore those masks, they were just horrible. Okay. It, are just horrible, not certified by any agency. I talked to the national manager, I told them, and he said, We have bought these masks in millions. And I'm surprised how these multinational companies and national companies have become so irresponsible that non certified masks, unauthenticated masks are distributed to the professionals. The second, my question is can you just classify, for example, somebody who is working in a covert ward? 
mm-hmm. is the bus for him to use a n95 mask somebody who is doing a general practice a psychiatry practice opd practice where the possibility of a direct covid patient is very less are a nurse are a ward boy are a cleaner what kind of mask they, they should wear because it is not practical not possible for every health worker to wear a n95 mask sir uh, we are in a time when community transmission is there uh kam se kam if everyone uh, if n95s are not available then a properly fitted three ply mask is an alternative but i i think so one must be very very sure uh, that if you are a doctor practicing right now and seeing patients and getting in close contact with patients please wear an n95 right now please breathe in through the n95 i think so dr wonder would be able to comment and probably correct me if i'm wrong here no i totally agree with you actually n95s are a must because if you look at the number of positives that we are getting these days in the uh, microbiology department almost 15 to 16% tests that are being conducted are coming positive now uh, whereas earlier we used to get 2 to 3% so every 5th uh, or 6th person visiting your opd's will be positive and i think it cannot be over emphasized what you said n95 is uh, is a must for doctors for nurses for paramedics whosoever and this is not going to this phase is not going to last for too long this acute phase is going to be there for couple, one or two months only so we need to protect ourselves now actually when the disease has really spread in our area and you won't have to do it for really too long it's a cycle we have seen Uh, which lasts for about four to five months in other places. If you look at Italy and New York, so we need to be more watchful now. And as uh, you are emphasizing, uh, we need to be on N95s, all of us. And the reuse policy that you have shown is, I think, uh, is a standard policy suggested by the All India Institute, also Absolutely, by the ICMR, sir. also. So the five mask sequential usage with using the envelopes of the kinds that you showed. where yes, you sir. keep them and keep the envelopes open so so beautifully uh, you have shown us yes, uh, the way to use it it's open for discussion anybody else wants to make comments or uh, suggestions you can ask uh, ashwin so uh, a great presentation ashwin uh, we have a couple of questions which people are dropping in chat box so maybe uh, dr manikanth is asking a question that if someone has to drink water in the hospital how we can do that uh so simple uh, i think so find a clean surface uh, where you can keep the stuff back uh, uh, use uh, i i have my alcohol sanitizer here only so in case uh, clean your hands first uh, remove your face shield uh, your in, uh, your uh, three ply mask and put the masks on the side i think so then uh, follow same uh, hand uh, sanitizing precautions and then uh, wear the mask again so we cannot live without uh, drinking water and i think so and but, but the only problem right now which i say and i feel is that uh, for example in dmc we come around 8:30 and go around 4 o'clock it's a very very long time the mouth is absolutely dry rose the throat is is like sticking and you know you feel you're covid infected at the end of the day so many times i feel that my throat is all choked up and uh, uh, together but uh, there's no alternative i think so and i've stopped uh, stop socializing totally in the hospital i make sure that uh, even my residents and everybody nobody has uh, nobody has drink uh, nobody even drinks tea tea together so just just maintain social distancing just disconnect everyone that's the time sir i hope sir i answer, have answered you sir manikan sir yeah yeah right right yeah. okay sir. so uh, we have a couple of more questions they are on the type of masks which are coming so dr asha murthy is there from chennai she is uh, saying that there is a swiss based n95 mask which is having a valve and it can be reused for 38 weeks and there is a weekly wash which is required at the same time we have dr dhanuka who's also put in a comment about the living guard mask so dr yes. ashwin they have comments about these two part types of masks sir uh, uh, dr dhanuka and ma'am uh, just uh, uh, just a word about the living guard mask please use it as a pollution mask only any mask which is washable should not be used in a setting of covid uh, secondly it has has a valve uh, uh, thirdly uh, uh, if you read the living guard thing i just confirmed it yesterday from the website also it has not got any certifications there's a message that pops up that we have applied for certifications living guard has got 
no certifications at all please gift it to your driver or somebody else uh, drivers also not because then it has got a valve and it will it can you know these asymptomatics can spread it do not use it right now it is really really bad that it has got none of the certifications niosh is very important my first preference would be anything that is a niosh certified mask second preference would be a bis a bureau of indian standards certified mask uh, the third would be probably a kn95 if nothing fits me i would probably try a kn95 and try to seal seal it with a tape so that i breathe in through the respirator i really hate the ear loop mask they do not fit well the the head uh, mask you know really fit well and you can you really tighten it uh, headband once so please do not use living guard with your patients it has not got any certifications not tested at all right so i cannot make out there's another question from someone and some uh, uh, the question that is which being raised is that how long can someone wear an n95 mask what about the saturation of oxygen in our blood for wearing the same mask for say 3 or 4 hours or more as we are inhaling and exhaling the same air so she went to dinesh and i put forward this question oh okay yeah, i just read medical Hi, department yeah. <laughs> Hi, sir. Yeah. Hi, sir. Sir, frankly frankly speaking i will make a disclosure i have allergic bronchitis since the day i was born i still take inhalers in between uh, i am the guy who's been wearing n95s testing n95s uh, probably a bit morbidly obese now i lose weight sometimes i have not had any breathability issues if i do not have an issue probably the rest of us should not have an issue wearing an n95 all this is uh, uh, is is uh, is wrong to say that uh, but then uh, studies need to be conducted where saturation needs to be monitored and i think so so far so good uh, i i i prefer wearing an n95 and i feel safe in it so Yeah, Ashwin, nice. Actually, I'm just reminded uh, there are some patients of OSA. In fact, in family also, I think we can have Dr. Wander's comments also for same. Uh, you know, not just hypoxemia; it's the carbon dioxide retention, and people are saying they're sleeping more. And uh, let's have Sir's comments. This is a general view, so it just. No, I think the N95 is not easy to wear, and uh, although it is an absolute must for us to wear. so as ashwin is saying the work hours have to be uh, shrunken a bit and when you are on your workplace obviously you should not socialize at all because you should get maximal output out of your work hours so what i have noticed is that one tends to sleep more in the afternoon your sleep hours increase whether it is uh, i have not been able to figure out whether it is a hand sanitizer which vaporizes <laughs> the pp whether that is responsible or it's the carbon dioxide but there is something which something. is making us sleep in the afternoons we've never done that yes. before so it does uh, kind of there is a there is a trade off that happens with these n95s but as ashwin has emphasized to us all healthcare personnel need to wear the n95s uh, uh, navid the other day told me actually some of us who wear glasses the glasses get uh, actually uh, 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 there is a blurring of the glasses because of the fumes but yeah. if you use the actually if you use a, uh, a, a toilet paper or if you use a paper uh, napkin just fold it couple of times and uh, fix it inside the uh, nose pin then the that absorbs the uh, humidity and especially in these days of humidity it will not fog your um, uh, your spectacles yes. so that is something that you can use and in fact uh, he just sent me a video of that which i started using that has also helped uh, so okay. this kind of yeah. modification we have to make yeah some innovations yes sir so yeah. same thing i have tried today also because 3 days i was on covid duty so day one i used n95 mask my nose was totally you know uh, is like uh, excoriation started it sort all because of the tight stuff of that you know, strings and the nose pen the next day i put a cotton piece in between but still that was not that comfortable to me the third day today i put a gauze piece so that i think is more favorable because that save your neck or uh, nose from that uh, stiffness that pullness of that thing sir uh, there is a product like convertec called duoderm okay sir uh, what it does it it's a tape uh, which we use for uh, patients wounds you can place it over your nose it will protect the nose Yep. gauze would not be a good idea because you know then it would leave uh, it, the gauze is like always has got sieves in between 
So, yeah, you, know, you can have those virus particles and it should be the dirtiest thing on your face, sir. Yeah. So, instead of a gauze, and you'll have that, you can have that duodenum uh, dressings. Probably I have a yeah. dressing or two that I can give you. You can try them. Actually, okay. uh, I, I, have, I have used paper tapes, uh, ma'am. Yeah, agree. Uh, paper yeah, tapes I have used yeah. them. Paper they are so very comfortable and so paper yeah. tapes yeah. is like for the outer seal. Uh, yeah. uh, sir yeah. was worried about probably getting injuries on the nose. So duoderm is a very good tape to uh, put in, uh, and it is what recommended about Johnson by Johnson Band-Aid. Company. Is a simple sticky thing like that so type of thing. That's perfect, perfect, sir. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So uh, Dr. Bali and Dr. Dinesh have made very astute comments. Even I have had the experience of putting in the simple uh, bandage. So thank you so much, Ashwin, for thank answering this question. We also have a. Uh, uh, question that uh, uh, that can we use hydrogen peroxide to uh, kind of ETO these masks? I think Dr. Uh, Vandan is asking, and he's also saying that as you've said that five day cycle we use for nine, uh, N95 masks. So for how many days we should use, and how should we discard? I think you did mention, but maybe for the uh, so, sake of uh, answer, yeah. So what I usually do is I take about uh, take four N95s. Uh, so these four N95, if uh, used constantly for four days, you can run it for five cycles. Do not use your N95 so more than five times. So make, it makes it four uh, N95 for five days. So makes it 20 days of using four N95 uh, as simply uh, as simple as that. So four N95 for so five days is 20 days. Then replace these fours uh, all together. Hydrogen peroxide as a method of UV decontamination is uh, very good, but uh, this is actually uh, for places where you can do mass sterilization. You need to have a sterile system in place in your hospital for doing uh, hydrogen peroxide. The only problem with the hydrogen peroxide decontamination is that it takes uh, uh, takes about six hours for it for the cycle to con con constantly run. So I do not find. Uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide decontamination for masks is pretty pretty compact. UV would be my preferred method because it is like 15 minutes of exposure one side, 15 minutes of exposure, maximum exposure on the other side. You are good to go and uh, probably reuse the next day. But an ideal way is I would probably uh, use UV as a secondary method of decontamination and still use my mask on the fifth day. If the prices of the mask come down, to rupees 60 or 50, I think so. It's a viable option for us to use a new mask every day, by the way. So, Ashwin, the... uh, can I just chip in Shiba for a moment? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure, I, sir. I don't think hydrogen peroxide is to be used for masks, but yes, hydrogen peroxide for surfaces, for the fomite transmission, for your uh, handles of doors, for the tabletops, it's a good mode of um, uh, uh, sterilization. But for the masks, as uh, he's emphasizing, uh, actually it is the time period which uh, which helps. So just keep them for the fifth day for uh, a repeat cycle. If one really actually wants to reuse, but actually he's right, the prices have really come down now. As uh, I don't think we really need to reuse masks to that extent. Right, right. Doctor so. Vandan is asking, uh, is raising his hand. So only five, after five cycles, it should be discarded. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. If you purchase the four, if you purchase the four, five mask N95 after four, twenty days, all should be discarded. Yeah. So they could be new what, ones. what I usually do is I I clean my hands first, take a scissor. Uh, I'm a surgeon. Take a scissor, cut it, and put it in the red red bin. So uh, due to COVID times, uh, the things have uh, pretty changed. Pehle ham mask ko yellow mein discard karte the. I had a word with the ICM. They said these masks need to be discarded in the red. So red. the policies are quietly changing. I cut it so that nobody nobody ever thinks of reusing them. So that's the ideal way to dis, uh, to you know destroy that mask so that nobody even dares to think of reusing and catching hold of these uh, masks. No, sir. Uh, my question is that you have told that only after five days, five days reuse the N95. After five cycles, it should be discarded all of the pieces. Yes, yes. Hanji sir. Hanji, jaise jaise unka time pura ho ja raha hai, 5-5, jis din aapka pura ho gaya to discard kar dijiye. Ya kat mein ek hi bag mein dal ke kar dijiye. Right sir, right. Either of these ways is correct sir. Right sir, right. Thank you sir. Can I make a comment? Dr. Vikas sir. Yeah, next excellent presentation Dr. Ashwin. So I have a comment to make regarding covering of N95 masks with surgical masks. So there is an updated CDC guidance which I came across a few days back which was updated on 16 June. 
So okay. what CDC now and OCC is that it recommends preferring face shield uh, over uh, N9 uh, surgical mask for covering an N95 if you are planning to reuse an N95 mask. Yes. So the reason is twofold. One is that uh, with uh, the pro this procedure of covering N95 with surgical and using it for long hours, there may be increasing concentrations of carbon dioxide that we are inhaling. And the second point is that it will increase your breathing resistance when you cover N95 with a surgical mask. So once your breathing resistance increases, there are more chances of seal that you have formed with uh, N95 and your face that may break off. So CDC recommends that even if you are planning to reuse your N95 mask, it should be covered with a face shield rather than surgical. But in India, I would say that if we have doubts about genuinity of N95, so that only makes uh, one strong point or reason that we should cover N95 with a surgical mask. So, uh, uh, so I, in my slides, probably uh, showed that you need everything right now. So I am really worried of uh, worried about you know decontaminating these masks. So I was using everything. I'm not sure about. I never saw these CDC guidelines. Probably I missed up, uh, missed them. But I've been uh, using everything that I could find to cover and protect myself. Yeah, so uh, I only just want to reiterate because yeah. there have been studies uh, where they have compared it that if we cover it for up to one hour, then it doesn't increase carbon dioxide concentrations much and healthcare workers don't feel the increased breathing resistance. But if you are using it for long hours, then there may be some issues. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah. That's so good thank you so much, Dr. Vikas, for your astute comments. Uh, Dr. Vikram, Dr. Prerna, Dr. Sadik are all appreciating the great discussion that we are having. And at the same time, Dr. Prerna is saying that if you could provide some uh, summary about some ongoing study for effects of hypoxemia with N95 marks on healthcare workers. I think Vikas has just now mentioned about this study that does talk about carbon dioxide uh, retention. So any clues, uh, Dr. Ashwin? Uh, Madam, uh, I've, been, I've been following a lot of Twitter uh, rather than studies on this. I think so. Dr. Monica is uh, trying to do a study in her own hospital with regards to N95 uh, variability and uh, saturation and other things. Uh, but uh, 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 right now, uh, I see a lot of these anesthetists, you know, wear one mask, another mask, three masks, four masks, and show their saturation on the monitor. And they say, see, our saturations are not, and in America, it's a more of a problem where nobody's wearing any mask. So see, they say right. that we're wearing four masks, and our, and our saturation is still same. So please wear a damn mask first, and wear it properly. Uh, the rest will... So, Ashwin, uh, just wearing uh, goggles is important under the face shield or we can just have the face shield and the mask? Uh, madam, uh, goggles, uh, if you're wearing a face shield, then it is enough. If you, if you do not have access to face shield, then a goggle should seal your face uh, properly till the end. So, uh, uh, I see a lot of people telling me, sir, I have put this on prescription glasses. My eyes are protected. Hai. Please do not consider your eyes... Uh, protected with these uh, uh, spectacles at all. Please, if you're wearing goggles, uh, uh, you should have them cover your uh, face, uh, uh, eyes pretty well. So I would prefer a face shield. And uh, uh, Ashwin, you had a lot of uh, half respirators and some helmets, you know. Can you please show us the... Uh, I'll just get it for you. I'll just get it for you now. So... Uh, this is what a half uh, respirator looks like, madam. Right. So, this is an elastomeric respirator. This is like a rubber sort of thing. If you don't fit normal N95, fit nahi ho ra, so this will set, set pretty well on your face. But it tightly fit. Ho jata hai. Iske aage ye disposable filters. Lagte hai. So, these are my packed filters. Uh, UV sterilized and kept like this. This uh, is tape karke achhi se rakha hua hai. So these fit on this properly. So this is like a P100 filter. This is a plastic bodied version bhi aata hai, which is made of plastic and this is a, this is like your cloth version. This will get dirty very fast and you can, uh, it can get contaminated and you need to have those four or five pairs. These are plastic bodied ones. So these, you know, you can just uh, clean it with the alcohol sanitizer, expose it to UV and then reuse again. 
So if someone is not having a UV and someone leaves it in his or her car for five days, her car is specifically you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, would that dry heat work? Would that dry heat work? Uh, madam, uh, the uh, ideal temp the ideal temperatures are supposed to be seventy to eighty five degrees uh, right. for about sixty to seventy minutes. Uh, uh, probably, our uh, here fifty degree achieve or else so it will give and you a false sense. And Dr. Uh, Asha Murthy from Chennai, uh, I just wanted to know what are the precautions you're going to take when you're running a clinic, private clinic. Uh, uh, Do you yeah, have to wear a PPE kit and uh, all the glass mask and all that when you're examining the patient? Because you have to do echocardiogram, you have to take an ECG, do a treadmill and all. So as for a cardiologist, what are the things we have to do? Or it just a N95 mask or uh, the glass uh, uh, face shield is enough? Or we have to wear a PP because it is very difficult to dispose these PP kits also Absolutely. after you finish up your clinic. So I would so, I would like the cardiologist to, to answer. Uh, I would request Dr. Wanda sir. <laughs> I would request Dr. Wanda sir to please take uh, Dr. Asha Murthy's question regarding wearing a PP. Uh, what was the question? Sorry, Ishiba. What was it? Uh, so she was asking regarding wearing a PP in the routine OPD clinic procedures. What precautions a cardiologist should take? She was, Asked. Well, um, we are all running our clinics um, uh, as usual. And I think what Ashwin showed us, that this is what we are following. We wear a face shield, we wear the N95 mask, and we wear a gown, which is non-permeable. And uh, that's about all. Actually, the usual PP kits are required for people who are entering into the COVID areas. But since these, and also it is your... Uh, exposure time which is a very important factor. It is said that whenever exposure time is less than 10 minutes, then uh, for you to have an adequate dose of, uh, I mean the virus is not uh, going to be there. And mostly the interaction in your OPDs is not lasting for that much time. So OPD1 must wear uh, hand gloves, uh, wash, your, uh, change your gloves episodically, use hand sanitizer frequently, and uh, don't touch your face, wear, wear a face shield, but the full hazmat suit is not required. And uh, all of us are actually in a hospital using the non-permeable gown with face shield and N95 masks and the uh, gloves, of course. Right. right. Thank you, sir. I think that solves the uh, question. So another question from Dr. Rohit Garg is to what about ISO certification of the masks? Are they good? And they claim to be as good as N95 and they are five layered. Uh, sir, uh, very simple. Simply put, I was uh, I cleared my doubts yesterday about uh, these because I needed to, you know, be very very sure about what I'm presenting. So first is look for NIOS certification. Second, if NIOS is not available, look for FFP2 certification, which is the European standard. Worst to worst, agar humko, you know, we have these locally manufactured one. Don't go for DRDE or other things, or uh, just look for ISI. 9473, which is uh, the standard by the same ISI mark, which is the BIS standard. Uh, it is very, very strict. And, you know, most of the masks, if you check their website, you'll be surprised about how many, how many companies are failing their tests. So there are about eight or 10. Uh, there are certain masks by Venus, Surgeon, uh, Magnum, and even 3M, which are BIS certified. So please don't go for any ISO. If you're, if you, it's, it's a worst case scenario and you do not have anything uh, else, then seal these upper edges, like Dr. Uh, Suman said, uh, to say, seal the upper edge with a tape so that, you know, they're tight enough and, you know, you're not able to squeeze from the sides at all. Right. So, uh, Dr. Surinder Gupta has put a comment that he iron outs the N95 mask with an electrical iron and he adjusts it at the rayon setting wrapped in a handkerchief. So, what are your comments uh, on that, Dr. Ashwin? Uh, respected sir, please uh, do not uh, do not uh, you know try to use heat over the surface. Please leave it in a bag uh, as as an ideal method. If you are ironing it, the electrostatic charges that that are responsible for the filtration of particles would be destroyed. And uh, I don't know if you are using what sort of mask that you are ironing. Probably because if you are not using those uh, proper masks, most of these would not uh, you know get ironed, and they get their shape will get spoiled. So it would. Uh, totally defeat the purpose, sir. So please do not uh, uh, probably iron iron them. Rather leave them in a brown bag. I'm, I've been showing this back since all evening. So use them. 
Yeah, so I think the questions are simply pouring it and uh, the, talk, uh, the clock is also ticking. But uh, just to have last one or two questions, uh, Dr. Vikram is asking that what is the best way to dispose of the mask in a private setup when they have to be done together? And another question from Dr. Surinder Gupta comes for the surgical gown, they should be fabric based. But at the same time, Dr. Manikant has posted another question. He says, Ashwin, why don't we have another session on surgical gowns, the fabric, the sanitization, the OPD management. I think we can definitely cover that up in the uh, next session if uh, Dr. Wander allows us for the same. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> so maybe... Sure, I think, uh, <laughs> Dr. Ashwin had a long day today. It's been nice. Uh, and, uh, Please, sir, I'm loving it. Uh, I'm loving it because I think it's the need of the hour. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> definitely, it's need of the hour. And every, every patient wants to know the details of it. And uh, it might be helpful to many of them. These discussions, such type of discussions, might be helpful to most of us. Yeah, yeah definitely. because these are practical yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shiba, I and want to add something to Dr. Ashwin, sir, if possible. Yeah, yeah, surely, Dr. Bonji. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sir, if we use uh, UV. Ma'am, sir, no, you. Sir, no, you. May. I'm just Anji. Ashwin. Anji, Dr. Ashwin, if we use UV method of uh, disinfection or sterilization in the clinic, can N95 mask be used for a more number of times rather uh, than five? Like, can it be used for more number of times? Ma'am, uh, so I've been working with this uh, group of physicists from the Stanford University about UV decontamination of these masks. They say that if, if a mask is UV decontaminated, it can be used up to 20 times. It does not destroy their paper. The group is publishing a paper on this. But I would not still okay. use uh, in the interest of everything as a surgeon, I know that uh, this mask uh, would still be dirty. So if the cost is down, the probably I'll, I'll throw, if it is in my hands, I will throw that mask every day and not reuse it. But since cost and uh, availability is an issue and we're really worried about supplies, and uh, so it is better to you know uh, use them uh, like that. I think so still five uses is adequate, uh, even if UV sterilized, but a word about UV sterilization is ye jo commercial available, commercially available units hai, in me aapko power dekhna chahiye ki how many tubes are there. So what even Philips and other things are coming up with these UV units, which have a single tube, uh, which is uh, kehte ki 15 watt ki tube lagi hai. So 15 watt is not the power delivered by the UV. It is uh, divided by three. So, so it is actually a five watt tube. So one has to be very careful. We made this UV DMC model from a phototherapy unit. So I had four tube light. Lagai thi. So these guys uh, reviewed my unit. So they told me that you, you don't have adequate spacing. You need to increase powers for mask decontamination purposes. For vegetables and all, probably two tube lights will suffice. But for when you're talking about an yeah. industrial level, hospital level, disinfection of these, so probably you need more tube lights. So one has to be very careful about what to choose. Actually, sir, DRDO ne bhi nea launch kare na ek UV disinfection lamps and the uh, boxes they have uh, invented. So I'm, I've, like... I've I've seen a lot of these models. Agar wo lamps ki baat kare na, it is scientifically not correct to expose your eyes and skin to them. Uh, yes, hand wale units are. So it is not Anji. practical and probably you'll uh, will land up with some sort of problem uh, with these. So it has to be a covered box with no exposure to eyes or skin at all and. Uh, uh, for other things, it will work. For your PPE, uh, in particular, your face shields and everything, we would probably need more uh, uh, more industrial level uh, UV lamps. So there are a very interesting group of scientists who uh, have lots of things. You know, they say that if you have to mask, you have to have a plate honi chahiye so that you have sources on the two sides. Uh, in case my model, my model only had rooftop uh, lights. So they said that you need to increase reflection on all surfaces so that, you know, it gives more energy if you have a single uh, plate down. So there are many things with regards to UV, UV which is uh, being updated on a daily basis. We are trying to publish our own study on uh, disinfection and almost all culture plates that we expose to this uh, were clear. 
So I think uh, uh, Dr. Wander sir would agree with me. An amazing interest uh, you have uh, generated, Ashwin. And questions are simply pouring. And as we wind up the sessions, there are last two questions. One is from cardiologist Dr. Anusya Sen. She is asking that whether the mask can be washed. And final comments from our very dear pulmonologist, Dr. Akash Deep Singh. He is saying that which is the best mask for the OPD? Is it 3M8210 or is it 3M1860? As 8210 straps are not so good I'll, and I'll cannot be mask. reused. So, uh, so just a minute. Uh, I have them here. I'm I'm touching them. I will. I promise I will not use them again. I have touched them without sanitizing my hands. So, uh, two important things. Uh, firstly, I'll answer. Uh, 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 what was the question, madam? Ma please, ma'am, please do not wash your masks. Please, 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 do not wash your masks. If you're washing your masks. You know, uh, that electrostatic charge will not work. If you start Googling about it, you will know more. Uh, do not use sanitizer over them or washing them. They will be rendered inert and probably you'll expose yourself. Uh, uh, so please do not uh, uh, wash them at all. For Dr. Akashdeep sir's question, I have both of them here. This is the 8210 by 3M, which has got those uh, silicon straps, the original silicon straps. Uh, and this is the 1860, which is the only medical surgical respirator made by 3M. Uh, the difference is that ye probably this was never made for such heat and everything. So, so this uh, breaks very easily if you keep it in the car. Ma'am, Shiva, ma'am, if you yeah. keep it in the car, this will melt off from the glue. And you know, the next time you wear, wear it, it will snap off. So, really? uh, I've been doing it regularly. Otherwise, Ashwin, it is, uh, <laughs> it's been standing through as of now. But I agree. It may be you're right that uh, as of so now, these, it is good. Yeah. So these silicones ones don't hold better. Ye yeah. jo hai, 1860 hai, it's a very sturdy and it's the only medical, it's written on top that it's a medical surgical respirator made by 3M. Uh, isme jo hai, nale wale straps lage. It's like the same nala that we have. So they're very, very sturdy. So my in my experience, it costs more. The original one costs about 156 a piece, including GST, and this costs about 80 rupees. But I think so this is more durable. So uh, something on the cost of uh, N95 masks, uh, you've already answered that question that was from Dr. Vandan. And Dr. Vikas Gupta has made a final comment saying that 1860 that you are showing, the blue one, that's a surgical N95 and it has uh, fluid uh, resistance. So okay. uh, having said that, uh, we have done through most of the questions in the chat. And uh, 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 do you have some comments to make, Dr. Ashwin, before I hand over the podium and the entire discussion to Dr. Gurpreet Wander, sir, who has been uh, guiding us throughout the discussion? So my final comment would be try to be safe as possible. I'm just a phone call away if you need any help. Uh, I would keep 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 working like this and try finding solutions for common problems. As I've been taught by Dr. Bonder, uh, he always tells me that you simple things, you find it, you find the solution, you find it. That is important, I think. So that is the need of the hour. So I'm just a phone call away for anybody. Uh, uh, you can contact me, find me somewhere. Uh, I'm always there to help. Yeah, and uh, now I would pass over the dais to our uh, mentor, uh, Dr. Wander, for his uh, final comments as we conclude the session. Well, thank you, Ashwin, for this very lively and very enthusiastic uh, uh, deliberation. And uh, I must thank all the participants for having taken so much keen interest in this issue, which involves all of us. Uh, Dr. Shiba has always been uh, one of the best compeers, whether it is the college functions, it is a con medical conference, or now in uh, these... Um, uh, these video interactions that we have. So thank you, Shiba, for lovely comparing. Thank you, and thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, you have to unmute, sir. Uh, mute. We should all thank Dr. Rajiv Gupta for having actually uh, thought of it. And uh, it was his brainchild, he thought, and he inspired Dr. Ashwin to give a talk to all the people in the city. Because we in DMC keep hearing, we are well aware that Ashwin is very enthusiastic and very knowledgeable in all this uh, field. And we keep using his expertise for this. But it is nice of Dr. Rajiv Gupta to have used this expertise of his for all the physicians are around. And we wish you all uh, a very safe time. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank I think so. We, much, we have recorded this for uh, use later also.
So probably Great. this for those who have not seen it, we can have this resource for everyone to see. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, sir. Thanks for thank an you. excellent talk. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Shiva Ashwin and Dr. Wander, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye.